Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're diving back into our series dedicated to Chinese breakfast foods with a shot at a very simple but also deceptively difficult snack item known as a xiaobing. For those who are not familiar, the Chinese xiaobing, roughly translating to a Chinese biscuit, is a popular flaky and yeasted snack item that can be served in many different forms. Oftentimes, you will come across it stuffed with sesame paste, green onions, eggs, Chinese pork floss, or even simply just served on its own. Today, we'll be doing our version with a few of my favorite additions, which is a simple wok fried egg, green onions, and some black and white sesame seeds for a colorful finish. While at its surface, this one may seem like a fairly simple one to take on, the most the most challenging task today will be about achieving those flaky layers to our biscuits without the inclusion of butter, which you would more commonly come across in European baking. I've got a user-friendly solution for this, as well as some more challenging tricks that may take a little bit more elbow grease and effort that we'll dive into as well. Okay, so let's get into it. All right, so kicking things off first, I'm starting off with the only vegetable in today's recipe here, which is a lot of green onions. This is about eight or so, or basically an entire bunch as you would buy them at a market. I'm removing the roots here as well as the thinner leafier bits too. These parts can get a little bit bitter since it's the youngest part of the green onion. Then I'm arbitrarily separating the whites and greens because I forgot what I was making. These are all going to the same place so there's really no reason to do this for your own attempts. Either way, I'm slicing everything up thinly on a bias, then setting this all aside while we dive into our dough next. I'm measuring this out on a gram scale for accuracy, but if you don't have a kitchen scale, what's most important here is that this is a 2 to 1 flour to water ratio. So up first here is 200 grams of AP flour, followed by my remaining solids, 5 grams of kosher salt, and a single tablespoon of white sugar for our yeast to feed on. I'm giving this a toss to combine, then in a separate bowl, here's our 100 grams of warm water, followed by a quarter teaspoon of dry active yeast. We're letting this hang out for about 10 minutes and looking for bubbles to start forming to make sure that our yeast isn't dead. Then I'm combining this all with my dry ingredients and kneading until a solid dough forms. Then next, I'm oiling up a smaller bowl here so that we may cover and rest our dough for one hour or until roughly 50% larger in size. If it's particularly cold where you are, and yes, it does get cold enough to ruin your proofs during the winter here in California, go ahead and toss that into your oven with the light on, and this should create a nice balmy 70 degree F environment for your yeast to activate. Meanwhile, back over on our cutting board, I'm whisking up four eggs for our filling, combined with one tablespoon of Chinese Shaoxing cooking wine, and half a teaspoon of cornstarch to help keep our eggs tender in the wok fry. I'm whisking this up until a smooth egg slurry forms, then we're heading over to the stove. Over on the stove, I've got my wok at medium heat here, no need for anything too aggressive at this point. Then I'm adding four tablespoons of peanut oil and as always, long yao for that nice non-stick surface. Then next, I'm adding my egg to the wok and giving it a nice gentle turn to let as much of that egg spread out as possible, sort of like an omelette. I'm loosening up the sides a little bit, saying a little prayer and giving this a flip. Yes, that is a little bit of burning on the bottom there, so hopefully you get your courage up a little bit faster than me at this point. I'm removing this from heat, then rolling it up into a log and setting it aside for our filling later on. More about this in a moment. First up though, we're diving back into our dough here, starting off by liberally flouring our work surface, and then what you'll want to do is punch out the air of your dough with your hands before you start rolling, because this was a little bit annoying to do at first. I'm rotating this a quarter turn after each roll until our dough is paper thin, or probably more likely until you give up and decide it's good enough. Then moving on to our filling, I'm adding a tablespoon of sesame oil to the center to start, followed by our green onions and finally our egg pancake going on top. Then I'm very gently folding my dough shut, tucking in the sides to make sure everything stays in place, and then dividing this into what should be four equal pieces. Yes, I did try and make this into eight equal pieces, but things started to fall apart on me, so choose for yourselves accordingly. Next up, I've got a bowl of water here with a mesh strainer on top. Then I'm combining my sesame seeds in the strainer and getting everything nice and wet before adding them to my cutting board. You can also just do this over a sink too if you want. 
Either way, the water here is gonna help our sesame seeds stick to our xiaobing a lot better. It may also cause the dough to loosen up a little bit since you're incorporating more moisture as well, so you're gonna wanna start working quickly at this point. I'm giving everything a nice coating of sesame seed here, then adding to a parchment paper lined baking sheet, popping into a 400 degree F oven for 15 minutes, and we're ready to eat. Okay, so as many of you know, I don't particularly consider myself to be an amazing baker, which means that a dish like this is definitely one that takes me outside of my comfort zone. Ultimately, I think we did okay here, but I also wouldn't mind seeing more flaky layers going on with that biscuit too. I do think that you might be able to achieve this by rolling out the dough, then rolling it into coils, flattening it out and repeating. This is a similar technique that we used in our Xiambing recipe to create flaky layers, if you recall. This does, of course, double your work time though, so choose for yourselves accordingly. All that said, otherwise, I would still consider this a tasty success. The Xiaobing is crispy on the exterior with a soft and chewy bite on the interior. Our egg and green onion filling is a wonderfully subtle and understated addition that helps make this a hearty and filling breakfast, and is also a nice contrast to some of the more intense dim sum items that we have done in the past. If you do want to make this a little bit more salty and savory though, you can also replace that filling with some rosong pork floss, which is actually how I used to eat this a lot when I was a kid. Lastly, although the proof time on our dough did extend our cook time quite a bit, if you're looking for a leisurely Sunday breakfast idea to do this weekend, this is a fun one to take a shot at. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. For those who are new to the channel, this one is part of a larger series that we've been doing that's dedicated to classic Chinese breakfast items. So definitely check out that series next if you haven't yet because there's a lot of these. For the Bay Area locals, the Wu Can Cook Fried Rice Pop-Up will be back at the Hayward Farmer's Market tomorrow afternoon. So swing by and come say hi then if you can. More about that at wukancook.com slash eats. Lastly, if you are local here in the Bay Area, the Wu Can Cook Fried Rice Pop-Up is looking for a new space to call home, so if you know of any bars, breweries, or event spaces looking for a pop-up, please do let me know. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, be nice humans, and I'll see you soon.